Good morning. I hope that you're doing well this morning. It's a gorgeous Saturday morning, and as we gather, we get to look at a beautiful and short psalm. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 93. And Psalm 93 is the beginning of a series of psalms that talk about God's reign. Almost this anticipation and reminder for the people of Israel that God's in control. And not only is God in control, but if God's in control, then we should act like God's in control. And obey like God's in control, as if God is the king and not, you know, some evil king or prime minister or something. So, anyways, these psalms correct our worldview, they give us hope, and they, um, they speak to his glory, so they should inspire worship in our hearts. So let's take a look at this psalm and see what, uh, what it has to say. Psalm 93. The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and is armed with strength. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. Your throne was established long ago. You are from all eternity. The seas have lifted up, O Lord. The seas have lifted up their voice. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves, mightier than the thunder of the great waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, is the Lord on, is Lord on high is mighty. Your statutes stand firm, holiness adorns your house for endless days, O Lord. So this psalm sets it up very simply, very beautifully as well with this image of God enthroned in majesty, robed the world that he has made as the creator is established. It can't be changed. It can't be moved. Then there's this moment that where the seas enter into this for two verses. And the seas are an interesting idea because in Hebrew kind of mythology, the sea was where evil and where chaos reigned. So when God separates the land from the water, there's this idea here, at least within their philosophy, that what's happening is um, God's making order out of disorder. And, you know, for a, a race that didn't spend a lot of time in boats, that makes really good sense. Because if you think about it, the sea's always moving. It's always changing the land. You put something down, it stays there. The seas, they're just, they come and they go and they're powerful and they're terrifying. And so... The seas represent not only evil, but they also represent the evil of nations and the rebellion of man against God and his rule. All of these get woven in to this. And so here we have the psalmist um, putting two verses in the middle of this uh, psalm about God reigning, where it seems like, in fact, there's this turn, you know, like the earth is, every, the earth is firmly established and then the seas are just in motion. Um, but yet the sea's motion doesn't change what's been established. The sea's rebellion doesn't change who God in, is in his majesty. He is more powerful than the waves. He's more powerful than the tide. He's more powerful than even the roaring and the crashing of the waters, which is this image that um, sounds an awful lot like uh, Psalm 2, where the nations shake their change and chains and rage. Um, and the people shout in vain. There's this image here that uh, though evil happens, though uh, war happens, though it looks like things are out of control, if we look at closely, we see that God is still reigns, that he's in control. And then he turns it on the final verse. He turns everything back and he says, no, it's true. Your statutes stand firm. So God's laws stand firm. God's God's, uh, God's system of justice stands firm, though the world may not seem like it. God's system of justice stands firm. His holiness is present in the temple. His holiness is a delight to his people for endless days, O oh Lord. And so we're reminded of where we sit in all of this. Christ is our king. We, are, we look forward to Revelations chapter 20 and 21, the the return of the, the new heavens and the new earth, the end of all of the, the seas, not in the literal sense, but in the, the sense that all the chaos of a sin-filled world in opposition to God is, will be lost in the beauty of, uh, 
God's presence and Christ on his throne. We have this moment where we look to the the beauty of the king who will return on his white horse, who will enter and bring peace. And yet at the meantime, we live in the midst of these waters and these waves and in a world where we don't feel like we're in control, where we know that God is in control, but we don't see his control at times over the, over the sound and the fury of the crashing breakers of the waves. So in all of that, as uh, Christians, we're invited to take this psalm to heart and to focus on the holiness of God, to recognize that his holiness is what adorns our temples as well, our physical and uh, spiritual bodies, that we are, it's God's presence with us that sets us apart. And then living in that and focusing on that, we live in anticipation of the day that his that our king shall return in full. So it's just a simple psalm. I'd invite you to read it again, to think about um, that imagery of waves and to think about the chaos in your life. What things seem to be outside of God's control? What sounds um, in your life seem louder than his voice? Uh, think about that. And um, why? Why do they sound louder than God's voice? Why are, uh, is it your fear? Is it your desire? Is it um, uh, an idolatry? What is it that's uh, so loud to you that the, the voice of God or the power of God seems lost? Uh, sometimes it can be something that we hope for. Um, if you're looking for a relationship, it just feels like God can't do that for you. Um, then you're just going to, you know, I've decided, well, in that area, I'm just going to do it myself or uh, a, a job or um, a car or a truck. I don't know. Uh, so frequently, I think we also do that with uh, relationships with family members. I want my family member to behave like such and such, and they're not doing that. So I'm going to make them do that because that always works well, right? Um, instead, the, 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 the holiness of God invites us to serve, but um, manipulation is so much seems so much easier. Once again, that's just the chaos and the waves talking. So no matter where you're at today, my prayer for you is that the peace and the presence of the living God are your hope and that you experience his holiness today and tomorrow as you worship him. And I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. Let's pray. Father, as I look out over the world and my own fears and uh, my fears for my family and my fears for my uh, the people that I grew up with and my communities uh, in the United States, I just feel that um, wave crashing around me and I feel the chaos that overtakes me and then I have to return to the truth that your statutes stand firm and that all that you have made is firm like a rock. Help me to trust that rock, Father. I pray for those who are joining me um, and in their lives, Lord, whatever fears they face, whatever temptations seem to overwhelm them. Lord, the beauty of this psalm is simply said, uh, your throne was established from long ago. You are from all eternity. Lord, we have eternity in our grasp when we turn to you, when we are filled with your spirit. Help us to satisfy ourselves as we draw near to you and enjoy the presence of your holiness. We pray, Father, that you would go before us. We pray for um, those that we know and love who are hurting, and we pray, Father, for the conversations that we have with those that don't know you. Um, we pray that you would show your love in such a way that they would repent and draw near to you. Give us your wisdom and your grace, Lord that we may proclaim your gospel in the midst of the roaring waters and the rushing tides. For your glory, we ask all this. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me this morning. I hope you have a blessed and beautiful weekend, and I uh, hope we'll see you on Sunday. Bye-bye.